Cyrus, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Awesome. Um, welcome, everyone. You're welcome. Everybody knows me here. I'm Renny. I do the board. And I do sometimes. That's what the board does. Um, Sorry. Let's get let's get that organized. Sorry. <laughs> um, I need to decide what is the knock of all the lights. I know Gary's trying to video, but I'm trying to figure out what looks better. Uh, we we'll figure that out. Well, welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you. Um, very exciting for us. Um, this has been a wonderful, wonderful show. It's been great. People have been walking off the street. Um, I've never had a show where people cry. Mm. People come in and they're, they're so emotional. The other night we were, we were hanging out late. Somebody came in. They, Are you open? Like, At 10 o'clock. No. <laughs> we had the gate closed. We were like, no. And he just kept going. You know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> we like, I grew up with this stuff. I knew that S. I, I, he stole the S. He found the S that he learned how to write his name with. I'm like, wow, you know. So it's been a really great experience. Um, I love having a storefront gallery instead of an upper floor. Like, we were looking at lofts, because it's kind of nice to also be separated. Um, but I'm a people person. I'm a, we are social, political, so it's, it's nice to have the street interaction. Um, and this show has really opened the door. I mean, so many people, they, they keep me in the door. Can I walk? You know. Um, my husband did, you know, they're all these stories, it's so cool. Um, and, yeah, you're not taking my wine, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not taking my wine, you're doing. You're not taking my wine. We have a mutual friend. Now, you leave your wine, or if your wine has a little bit, you know, your wine has a lot, and hers has a little bit, like she'll steal yours. yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our red room, is the work of Calvin Jones. Yeah. Who is an amazing artist. I mean, really an amazing artist. Um, if you haven't gone to the bathroom, gone to the bathroom, you do have to go. You must go. Uh, close the door behind you. <laughs> so you can get the full effect. It's a crazy, it's a mural. It's a mural installation. It's an environment. Um, and when you're in there, um, you, you're you in Alice's Wonderland. Um, those of us, those of you who have drawn, who do any drawing, especially those of you who have done any cross-hatch drawing, you know what a pain in the gosunchi that is. Um, and those of you who have done wall work, know that having your hand, your arm extended for more than like a minute, a minute yeah, is painful. painful. Yeah. Take a look at what he did. My man got some muscles. You were like, rah! <laughs> he crossed out his butt off. <laughs> but beautiful work. Beautiful work. Calvin is going to... Yeah. I'm going to do what I know. The project, which he'll elaborate on, but it's, uh, it's Alice in Wonderland. And Alice is an African-American or black character. Um, and he's doing 44 images. I think it's going to, I'm doing both books, but the first book I think is going to take about 40, 45. And you're up to where? 50? I'm doing, I, just, I just finished the 12th one. So, so we're going to see all of them? Yeah, you're going to see all of them. Yay. So without further ado, our dear friend, Calvin Jones. Calvin, can I ask you, would it make a difference? Oh, everybody, I know it's not good for Gary. Yeah, it's extremely dead. So let me. Dead. So dead for Gary, but. Any opinions? How should we go? I prefer this, yeah. I like it. How's it working for you, Gary? Not an artist. All I got is the, all I got is there on the screen. Oh, you got the an audio. Screen. He's a popcorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a popcorn. Yeah. 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 on the screen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's no sweetie goose. So let's go with it. Captain Jones. Hey, Captain. Yeah. Captain. 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 Captain.
I, we had an assignment in art class in 11th grade, and the, the, the assignment was to uh, illustrate uh, a well-known piece of literature. So I chose Alice in Wonderland. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, kind of really loving the fantasy aspects of uh, literature and science fiction and comic books and, um, and the Disney version of animation and the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland, which I hadn't seen at this, you know, I hadn't seen until like maybe the 90s was the first time I actually saw the whole Alice in Wonderland Disney version um, film. Uh, but I, so I chose Alice in Wonderland because the little snippets that I did see, like the kids uh, show, you know, I was really fascinated by. Um, and I neglected to bring, you know, to show a drawing, the, the drawing that I did in 11th grade. But um, I always had in the back of my mind that I would do it again. Um, and it just so happened that uh, I, you know, life circumstances brought me to the point where I could actually start this drawing series and I started last November. Um, I didn't really, it really came about uh, pretty, uh, uh, I don't know, sort of improvisationally or intuitively. Uh, I knew I had this idea in the back of my head, and I was doing other, I'm doing other work. You know, I'm, a, I'm an artist and a painter. So I was doing a series of paintings that had nothing to do with this, but it was always in the back of my head. And um, and, and I guess in 2005, I was just walking behind the art museum, and I had my camera with me, and I just started taking pictures. I used to play back there as a kid. So I just started taking pictures of the landscape back there, like uh, a rock, uh, uh, rock garden and under the dried out the bridge and that whole pathway and the gardens and the trees and all that. And I, I, you know, I just figured, I was thinking that I would use these as photo reference for, for the Alice drawing. But I hadn't really found Alice yet. Uh, I started this mural project in 2007 uh, at, at the Walter Palmer Leadership and Learning Partners Charter School. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and I met this woman who, I was doing these, I'm also doing these uh, series of, of portraits of people uh, with gold backgrounds. And I asked her to propose for one of my portraits. And she said she would. So we did set up a photo session. And I was felt, and something just hit me about her while we were doing the photo session that, you know, just I guess the way she moved, the poses that she struck, and I just asked her, you know, I told her about this idea I had to do the Alice in Wonderland. I asked her, you know, if she would be interested in modeling for me. And she said, yeah, <laughs> amazingly. Uh, she's a writer and poet. Uh, Francine Natal is, is her name. And um, so 200 photographs later, we had three different sessions where she came to my house. And, and I just kind of basically, just from memory, I had these ideas of what I wanted her to pose as. It's just kind of following the story from memory. Um, and so that's the model that you, that's the person you'll see uh, throughout the drawing, is Francine. And she's my Alice. And, um, you know, I, it's, I, the bars, like the design elements come from, the bars come from my previous, my 11th grade drawing. So that kind of is a constant. I wanted to use the cross-hatch technique because I was teaching cross, I was teaching drawing at the Midland Art Center from 2005 up until 2008, and, I, and part of my drawing class was to teach uh, cross-hatching, and just teaching cross-hatching really gave me the urge to want to do it. So I figured I would I would use that technique uh, here in these drawings, but also because uh, you know John Tinio, who was the original illustrator of the Alice, the Alice right. book. I uh, also use a cross-hatch technique. Uh, so I thought, you know, it's kind of traditional and it kind of fit right in. It's something that I wanted to do. Yeah, we just something. And, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we start here with Alice reading, and um, that's uh, that's my daughter's cat there. In the door, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you can see the African sculpture of the upper left. I, I, you know, I'm just kind of like, I'm drawing things that I want to draw, mm -hmm. the way I want to draw them. Like I have no, I'm not trying to adhere to the story except as except as the scenes that are in the story. Uh, but I'm not trying to, you know, 
is uh, draw a pretty, you know, little white girl, teenage, pre teenage girl, or uh, anything like that. You know, I like the idea of it. Well, the thing is that uh, life gave, you know, my life gave me this person who was going to, to model for me. <laughs> and so I figured, you know, this is the person I need to be. Um, so that was the first drawing. This is the second drawing. And you know, there's two books, uh, into the looking glass, into right. the looking glass, and what Alice found there. Uh, through the looking glass, what Alice found there, and Alice, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Mm -hmm. So I'm draw I'm going to illustrate Alice's Adventures in Wonderland first. But at this point, I want to do both of the entrances, the entrance uh, scenes from the books into Wonderland. And uh, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, she goes. Um, through the looking glass. I'm sorry, she goes uh, down the rabbit hole, but in, um, through the looking glass, what Alice found there, she goes through the looking glass. And just the, also from the original drawing that I did in Lemfrey, is a central image of the girl going through the looking glass. And so I was, real, I was really excited to, to try to do that imagery again in a different way, and this is, you know, this is what I've done. Um, and uh, as you can see, there's a, sort of an African mask. I just, you know, I had this idea. I just, I'm going to use African, because I want to draw African masks. <laughs> so I thought it'd be neat to have them as decorations. Mm -hmm. uh, but as as the drawings went along, I started getting this idea that what's going to happen uh, in Wonderland is that these characters are going to be inspired by African sculpture, as opposed to being like, you know, Twiddle Dumb Twiddle Dumb 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 little fat white guys. So they're actually going to be, all the characters and the queen, they're all going to be based on either African sculpture or people that I know. <laughs> so it's going to be interesting as they go along. So this is down a rabbit hole, which is actually seen from the uh, Alice and the Vision in England. So I'm kind of going sequentially and some of the elements that, uh, oh. the elements that are from this room and from this room, the clock in the back and the mirror in this room, are both in the base drawing. So, and there's a sofa that's kind of my sofa, my, I mean my uh, chair in there. So Alice falls, after she uh, falls down and grab a hole, she goes, she encounters, Lewis Carroll, he, he wrote these, <laughs> these stories, like the scenes uh, shift, like dramatically. I mean, he could be, you know, talking about her going on the rabbit hole and, and chasing following the rabbit, and then in the next paragraph, it's like, oh, well, Alice is in this hallway, and you know, and she sees this, you know, this key on the table. Mm -hmm. So this is the tiny, there's a tiny key on underneath that candle. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, no. All my back instincts came, <laughs> came to the fore. Mm -hmm. um, but as you can see, the table, you know, it's totally made up. Oh, well, it's based on an African sculpture. Uh, I put, I made up the bowl. They were actually just the sculpture was really just these two figures, kind of uh, arm in arm in a way, like mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. <laughs> And you can't see the other figure, but. Um, and I just put a, a sort of upside down or the bowl kind of thing on it. And I'm just having fun with, you know, the texture. And I, I like to keep things really simple and basic. Uh, so the stripes and squares, you know, doors, the doors are based on the doors of my house. Anyway. So she's still in this, in this, this sort of middle ground passageway from from reality to Alice, this is uh, Wonderland, and she's in this, you know, this hallway. And Lewis Carroll describes it, there's all these doors in this hallway, mm -hmm. um, and that's all, you know he doesn't say what the hallway looks like. He just says there's these doors, and she comes upon this you know tiny door. So you know this is my version of that. Um, 
when all these drawings are done, I, I plan to uh, to create a book, uh, of the, a collection of all the drawings uh, for each book, and and reinterpret the scene, the uh, the, the uh, text that Carol wrote for each yeah. of the scenes that I'm interested in, uh, either as a as kind of a surrealist poem type thing or maybe uh, you know, experimental writing or something. I haven't quite figured that out yet. But you know, again, you know, the, I, I'm, using the, I'm using the mask here, and I like, you know, I like con uh, light, light shining on objects and showing shadows, uh, <coughs> and, uh, and so I'm playing with that throughout the drawing. The uh, the floor effects, <laughs> yeah, they I had to be they really kind of happen accidentally, like. I just know kind of what I want the floor to do, the pattern to do, mm -hmm. to lead you to get a sense of depth, but also to kind of, uh, you know, put a twist on what uh, the, the scene is. Because <coughs> rather than do a, a straight and narrow, you know, hallway, I, you know, you see I kind of bent it. So I wanted to sort of twist reality mm -hmm. a little bit because she is in you know, kind of the altered phase of existence. Um, like what happens there and what happens well here and here with the floor is uh, like I, I knew I wanted these uh, sort of con convex lines kind of overlap over overlapping. But then when I tried to make them into squares, I got this other effect that I didn't know was gonna happen, and that was that you know, it kind of looks like you're kind of being going down into a vortex type of swirly type of thing. And I didn't know that was going to happen. And so, I, you know, I just really drew it flat, but it doesn't stay flat, it warps visually. And the same here, you had the idea of uh, just a spiral going down, giving you the feeling of going down into a tunnel. And the spiral, I guess, I, I'm assuming everybody can see it, but it kind of Flicks it flickers in and out of your perception. It, there's a spiral, then there's not a spiral. Mm -hmm. It's just a tunnel spiral, tunnel spiral. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that was going to happen either. And, and it makes it much more interesting. <laughs> uh, so these things that are happening uh, just through the drawing process, I'm thinking of it really in a straightforward, straightforward way, trying to solve a problem. But these other aspects uh, sort of contribute to what's or expand on uh, the visual, you know? It makes it a little more psychedelic. So these are real things, like the way the floor is kind of, in the background, kind of swooping up. Or, like it, I just didn't know how to solve the problem of making them square, and so I just drew it the way that I, you know, ruled it out. <laughs> and it kind of had this kind of swirly and sort of warps effect in the background. Mm -hmm. And Alex, Alex shrinks down, uh, well, here, I'm sorry. Uh, here in, in her right hand, you can't see it clearly here, but in the drawing, she has a little tiny bottle. It says, with a label, and it says, drink me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and so this is the bottle that, that makes her small so that she can fit through the door. But she forgot the key is still on the table. Mm -hmm. So this is the tiny Alice uh, reaching for the key. And you can see on the floor next to her, you know, Liz Carl describes there as this cookie with this Quran on it that says E.E. -E. And so, uh, you know, I, so I wrote it in the voice E.E. -E with the you know, marks. <laughs> mm. um, I'm, I'm doing this, uh, you know, I, I try to do what I can. I, I, when I do the drawings, I try to focus just on what the scene is and, the most, and give, do it the most dramatic way possible, and, but give you enough information to sort of suggest that she's small. Like you can see the door in the upper left is proportionally bigger than in the previous drawings. So I wanted to get to try to make it seem like she's small because the door is much bigger and there's only one part of the door that you can see because it's so big. Uh, so, you know, I'm like dealing with these problems of how to do that, making the key look really closer to you than she is, even though our hand is pretty good, you know. So I wanted to also get that, get that uh, perspective. 
where she's feeling like she's really reaching and stretching. So she had, she's eating a, eating that cookie that was on the floor, taking a bite out of it, and she's grown large, mm -hmm. so she can get the key. The key is still on the table. It's on a sort of left edge of the table. Um, you see that little black ball? I just like drawing this thing, so I, it's in the first drawing. I like the shininess. I like, you know, the black sort of orc sort of covering in the drawing. It gives a little strangeness, a little surrealness to it. But visually, it's also kind of a stunning, you know, kind of an interesting uh, a visual. So the orb is here in, in this drawing. It reappears in, in later on in another drawing. Uh, there's, there's a little uh, African, it's, like, it's not a pill box, but it's a box, that figure on the table. Um, and the, underneath there's a little artwork. A friend of mine I encountered, I just met this guy who bought some records from him, some vinyl, and they have a vinyl store called Bowie Town Beach on Gerard Avenue. But he's really into artworks. And between the last drawing and this drawing, they came by my house and we were talking. And he's really into art box. So I said, huh. Because I'm going to do these drawings without, without having to draw a rabbit or a mouse. Because those are the, like the typical you know, imagery for Alice. So I want to do all these, all, all these drawings without drawing a rabbit or a mouse. So I, I'm using this art box as a creature uh, instead. So that I made sort of an art box shaped <coughs> pill box. Type of a little figure on the bottom there. And the other thing is, the other um, issue is how, how do I make her look monumental, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in such a tight space? And like having that shadow cast at the top, you know, mm -hmm. was just, just enough to sort of suggest that. And the same here with the shadow here. Uh, this one's very cool. And this is, she's so, Alex gets so frustrated because she's, you know, she's, she's trying to get to the door, and now she's big, she can't get to the door, and there's keys on the table, uh, and she starts crying, you know, because she can't get, because she's too big to get into the small door. And, um, and so this is sort of the back, you can see both of the figures now of the sculpture that I based the uh, table on. Um, so you can kind of see how they, you know, they're formed. But the artwork, you see the back of the artwork figure and the back of the pillbox figure that I just made up, you know, based on, you know, what I put, what it looked like in the back. Uh, but again, I'm keeping the warped, the warped hallway, uh, and trying to show the curvature of the walls uh, and how the doors, making the doors curve along with the walls. So, you know, the bathroom is based on this, these, uh, this background that I've invented, you know, for my, for my drawing. Uh, this, you know, the, uh, these bars, striped bars that sort of, uh, that uh, pattern the uh, walls and ceilings. So in the original drawings that were done for the original book, these kind of patterns aren't, aren't no, 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 no. All this, all this. And the waviness, that's, that's not. No, that's not in the, no. This is all stuff. All, these all are, you know, just my original take on the on the uh, on the book. The Tenniel drawings, they're very, they're very kind of they're sparse. He doesn't even like I'm pushing cross hatching to you know to the limit here. He really kind of uses uses this loose kind of cross hatch technique as more like an illustrated, you know, like of the time, like the Harper, you know, yeah. the right type thing. A lot of white space. Uh, yeah, a lot of white space. Yeah, exactly. But I'm going full render, you know, <laughs> as if, uh, you know, the black and white, the tones also suggest color. So after she cries, she, um, you know, there's this pool of tears that, that forms on the floor. And, uh, you know, Lewis Carroll, he doesn't describe how that could actually happen, of course. <laughs> But this is full of tears, and she falls into it. Uh, uh, oh, well, she does uh, actually. Uh, there's a little um, elixir left in the bottle, and she does drink it and turn it down. But then there's these full of tears 
uh, and she kind of just just float, uh, pulled away in the uh, in the tears. And in the tineal drawing, this is kind of a takeoff on the tineal. The tineal drawing, uh, there's a mouse where that you know I had the pill box, the African box from the table floating. Uh, but in the tineal drawing, that's a mouse, a dormouse kind of going, going the other way, while she's going the opposite way. And again, I'm trying to show that she's small up in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, I'm trying to make it look like the doorknob is really big. And, you know, there's a kind of a keyhole there. So after the pool of tears, uh, Alice gets, uh, well, while she's in the pool of tears in the story, she, uh, you know, there's these creatures. Carol describes these creatures. There are all sorts of creatures there, like all these different types of creatures. And he says strange creatures. And then he describes the creatures as a dodo, an eagle, a goose, a duck, uh, I think a turtle, a mouse, a crab, a parrot. You know, just these are strange. I guess back in those days, there may have been strange creatures, like a parrot would have been exotic, you know, and an eagle even, possibly. <laughs> I, don't know, but, I mean, the only strange, really strange creature was a dodo to me, you know, and I just thought the dodo would be like a really nice, strong image, a striking image, uh, kind of surreal image uh, that I wanted to, to display prominently in the drawing. And, you know, to sort of play with Alice's scale, you know, to kind of show that she's small because these creatures are the same size, if not bigger than she is. Um, uh, the background. Uh, imagery is based on this, you know, my uh, English ivy in front of my house. So I just took a picture of it and I used it as a background for the leaves. I but I totally made up the leaves. And the, this is based on, they're not actual exact representations of the ivy. Um, and I'm giving myself that leeway, you know. I mean, I'm making this stuff up, but it's all fantasy anyway, so I don't have to, you know, stick to uh, what things actually look like. Yeah. So there's a crab in the center. I can I try to fit things in. The little turtle on the on the lower right hand corner. I actually took from you know those old maps, ancient maps before they knew when the Europeans were first exploring, before they knew you know what a whale was and what a turtle was, a sea turtle was. They had these bizarre drawings of them. Yeah. So I took that that turtle from there. And there's the aardvark uh, and reappearing in the up in the upper right. And this is the caucus race. Uh, after they get after they get the shore from the last drawing, uh, the mouse says, uh, "Oh, Alice is asking, you know, how can we draw it off? How can we draw it off?" And the mouse says, "You know, we should have a crosses race." And Alice says, "What is that?" And well, we just all run around until we dry. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> so I wanted to show, you know. These creatures moving somehow. <laughs> you know, yeah. Then they had to be running. But in my photo session, I have this picture of Francine, and I don't even know why I took it. But I think she was just kind of walking across the room, and I just I was just taking photos, all kinds of photos, just snapping, snapping, snapping. And I just happened to have this is the only photo I have that has her sort of somewhere from the side, kind of looking like she's maybe running. <laughs> so. Uh, so it kind of saved me, you know, to have that one photo, and uh, and I was able to use it here. Oh. And the uh, background is uh, taken from a friend of mine. And I went out to uh, one of the local um, uh, arboretums, and uh, I think it was the Morris Arboretum. And I took a picture of him with a wall there, and that's what the wall is based on. I'm sorry. Uh, it's a, uh, it's like a little plateau when you kind of first go in, and it's like a big garden, and it's kind of manicured, and there's a, a stone wall. Yeah. I've taken a lot of pictures of it. Yeah. It's like I think they're like a statue or something like that. Yeah. So this, this, we're kind of coming to the end. Richard, kneel down, come on. <laughs> <laughs>
So uh, also with the grass, with the grass, I'm going to continue the checker pattern. I mean, that's what Disney did. Uh, um, so the grass is checkered and it's like the floor and the, the interior is checkered. So she's finally getting into Wonderland now. So things are going to start to get really interesting. And, um, and so we, this is the most recent drawing I finished last week, last weekend. And uh, there's a scene, I'm not, I'm not really adhering to, to Carol throughout like every little scene that he does, I'm doing. I'm just picking out scenes that interest me and I think are visually, visually interesting, but visually also important for the story. Uh, and there's a little bit that happens between the last scene and this scene, and that is she encounters a rabbit again, and the rabbit thinks she's his maid, uh, Harriet, I think is her name, and tells her to go fetch his kid gloves from his house, his house. And so Alice, you know, is tiny, and she goes there, and uh, <coughs> so she's looking around his house, and she sees this bottle. You see this bottle in the lower left-hand corner? But this time, the bottle's not marked drink for me or anything, but she takes a sip anyway, and she grows huge in the house. And so this is Alice grown large in the house. So this actually, this. Uh, picture of Francine was actually taken uh, later. It wasn't taken during our photo sessions. I knew I was going to be doing this scene, and I needed a couple, like the, I needed a couple of new images, and this was one of the images that I knew that I was going to illustrate. So I asked for the repose uh, for it. So this is uh, not from the original photo session, but still Francine. Uh, I basically housed some of the stuff in the house on another friend's <laughs> house, and that's her sofa in the back. She's a classic film, and uh, the bookcase on the left is, and the curtains are based on photos I put there. Mm -hmm. uh, the mayor well, we pointed out the black orb. He's been looking for it. The orb. The, what? the orb. The black orb. Oh, the orb is yeah, yeah, there. We yeah. found it, yeah. It reappears, <laughs> it reappears right, in this drawing. So I, I wanted to kind of also relay the act of growing, you know, the motion of growing. But, you know, how do you do that, you know, in a still image? And so I, I figure I had to have something in the process of being tipped over, like that chair on her leg, you know, and kind of just show, you know, action a little bit. And so I did that. Um, so is, this, is that a mirror in the back? In the on the right? On the back, yes. Well, it, there's a cat space in there. Yeah, mm -hmm. a, sort of a Cheshire cat. yeah, the Cheshire cat. So the cat reappears from the previous drawing, and you know the cat's going to reappear later on in some of the later drawings. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, you know, this is the most recent one. This is the last couple drawings mm -hmm. so far. So I, I used these um, uh, Ed Feldman. <laughs> Described them as uh, he was a really perceptive person. Also, <laughs> yeah, he talked about uh, art. You know, and, uh, he, he really recognized the playfulness because um, I'm having fun with the uh, with the rings around her legs. You know, uh, but the rings also have a, have a uh, have a function, a sort of formal function, and that is to sort of really emphasize the roundness, you know, the volume of her legs. So. Um, so the rings act as patterns, but they also act as volume signifiers and uh, sort of reinforcement of the figure. And that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Oh, you're, you're right? Well, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I, I, I'm going to reinterpret the text. So I'm looking for a writer, a writer or two. Okay. Yeah. Maybe awesome. I'll do different people with different pages. Okay. Awesome. Yes. I just, I think the whole notion of her getting bigger in that space, she's 
She's got the world on her knee there. That seems yeah. to me pretty good. The what? The world. Isn't that a globe on a table? Oh, yeah. 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 Chair. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh, you mean like one of those uh, yeah, yeah. little cases? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, it's a chair. Yeah, it's a chair with a right. kind of a round back. <laughs> Uh-oh, brace yourselves. Yeah. Watch your eyes. I'm going to do them one night at a time. We fun is going on. Ow. 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 I just want to take a small break before Henry goes on and invite you all. I, actually, I'm first. To the room? Go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom. Now that, you know, so, so put, it, put it into context. Take a little. Uh, you can put your hat on your chair. <laughs> but we're going to take five minutes. Um, you can drink your magic liquid so you can fit in the... <laughs> Kevin, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> 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 <laughs>